And this is my office, come on in. Very superstitious, so I always have to sit right here to post a video. If, if we don't sit right here, we have a bad video. Since 2019, my income has almost tripled. YouTube is very much like a, like a snowball effect where all the work you put in starts building up that momentum, which builds more momentum, which builds even more momentum. There have been a lot of changes throughout these last two years. I've moved to Las Vegas. I now have five YouTube channels. I've doubled down on the content I'm putting out and things are busier than ever. My name is Graham Stephan. I'm 31 years old. I make $6.1 million a year in Las Vegas, Nevada. And this is, wait for it, Millennial Money. My day is really boring. People think it's really exciting. Honestly, 10 hours a day is probably just spent uh, just in front of a computer. So I would say usually I'll wake up anywhere between like 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. And then I, I walk 20 feet to my office, I close the door, and usually I don't come out until like 6 p.m., sometimes 7, but in that office, I'm just trying to think of video ideas. I'm trying to plan out different concepts. For some reason, I have an easier time planning videos on a beanbag than I do on the couch. But I edit on the couch. You could just take this, put it here, lean up, and uh, just edit away. And usually then, after about 6 p.m., 6.30, we're wrapped up and uh, try to take the rest of the day off. So since the first episode, Macy moved in with me, and it's been really nice that like throughout the day, I could take like little breaks and we could hang out, we could kind of see each other. And it's nice just to kind of take myself out of the computer every now and then and just clear my mind and just relax a little bit throughout the day. I can't believe it's already been like almost two years since then. Wow. So I grew up in Los Angeles my entire life. It's really all I knew. And when the pandemic hit, it really made me reevaluate where I wanted to be and where I wanted to work. And once I came up to Las Vegas to see a friend, we really got to experience a different side that I'd never seen before. And I really liked it. And I was able to get so much more for the money. I was able to get so much more space. Everything was less expensive. And that allowed me to expand my entire business in ways that just was not as possible in Los Angeles. There's certainly a financial component to moving here as well that would allow me to get a home that is uh, almost 4,000 square feet for half the cost in Los Angeles. It allows me to have people working from the house all day that we could collaborate with each other that just wasn't as doable in Los Angeles. And there's certainly the state income tax. I would be saving 13.3% living here. And so that has to be factored in that that allows me more money left over that I could reinvest elsewhere. And a lot of that money just goes back into the business. This is my set and I was able to completely duplicate the exact same thing that I had back in LA. So when I'm filming, everything stays the exact same and there's really no changes that are made. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. It also really helps too that it seems like a lot of the financial guys on YouTube all live in Las Vegas. And it almost seems to play into the whole frugality thing where you are living in an area where your money goes further. And it was something that I've never experienced before because I've always lived in Los Angeles, so that was the norm. So leaving that and being able to experience something new just gave me a much wider perspective of what else was out there. Ramsey wants to help. Ramsey, what do you think? Oh yeah, he likes that. The money I keep in bank accounts has certainly increased, and some of that is just to continually pay taxes as they're due. But the other aspect of it is that I, I am always on the hunt for a good deal, and I never know where that's gonna come. So I prefer to keep some cash on the sidelines, just if I see a good real estate deal come up, if there's a good investment opportunity, I'm always able to jump on that.
every single time I walk by to the kitchen, I'm just like, I'm just sitting here looking at it for like 30 minutes. And every single time you see something new. So I still track every week all the money that comes in, all the money that goes out, but there is really no budget at this point that I stick to because like the default is always, I'm gonna save. The default is never spent. 112 degrees, barely feel it. Yeah, it doesn't feel us uh, any higher than 95 today. How did the smallest person end up in like the best seat of the car? If I do spend money, I mean, it's, it's not enough to ever really move the needle. Uh, at the very most, it's going out to all you can eat sushi at like $21 a person. And that's me even like extravagantly spending. There it is, <laughs> super sushi. I will get the bankroll. Yes, from a spending standpoint, there are some changes from about two years ago. The biggest change was that back then, I would do anything just for the sake of cutting back a little bit more and saving. And at this point, I definitely eased up a little bit. And the biggest thing that I would say that, I, that I've started spending money on that I never imagined in the past was being able to buy back my time. As an example of that, I would say sometimes uh, delivering food to the house. If that means that I could save an hour and a half, or even I could spend an extra hour and a half with Macy so she doesn't have to cook. Even getting a house cleaner, that was something that uh, I've never done before. Sound. Let's get. There we go. And then. So when we filmed the first episode, I was spending about 20% of my time working as a real estate agent, and then the other 80% of the time, till probably like two o'clock in the morning every single night, I'd be making YouTube videos. But when the pandemic hit and we were all just inside, that was the point for me where I was like, I want to just go all in on YouTube. I think the biggest shift for me over the last two years was probably more into financial commentary because it gives me more content to work off of and to add my own thoughts about. Because at the end of the day, there's only so many times I could talk about how to set up a Roth IRA. So in 2020, the YouTube ad revenue made about two and a half million dollars. And in 2021, we're on track to probably hit about 2.8 to $3 million by the end of the year. Hey guys, hey. wanna come to the office? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Two years ago, I was pretty much doing everything myself. And it got to a point about a year and a half ago where I had no time. I mean, I was going from probably six o'clock in the morning to eight, nine p.m. at night. As much as I enjoyed it, it was slowly wearing down on me. And the tipping point for me was really when I started to see my own content and my own work decline. That's the point where it just, it, it started making sense to bring someone else on. Posting time, you know what we need? We need one of those little bells. <laughs> bang, 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 that's what we need <laughs> for posting that. Bang, bang, 3.30. So Jack now, we have full time. He edits the videos on the second channel. He runs the podcast with me. We've just recently hired on Alex, who helps edit some of those videos on the podcast. He's doing the vlog. And these are things that just, it wouldn't be possible on my own. I enjoyed just being like a one-man operation. I took a lot of pride in the fact that like, you know, look at all these people out there with these huge teams and uh, look at how much I'm able to accomplish on my own. But I think at a certain point that was holding me back from continuing to grow because there's only so much work that I could do before just mentally you get burned out and then at that point work begins to suffer. So there we go. So I just got the notification so I see it posted. Ah, oh, one dislike already. Somebody's there, it's like, get the notification, dislike. Another thing I do out of superstition is that I always click on the video as soon as it posts and I'll watch it all the way through just to make sure everything is perfect. And uh, as you can see, I uh, always hit my own like button.
back then, like two, three years ago, I was indiscriminate about where I would be spending my time. There you have it, espresso. I would work 2 a.m. I would wake up at uh, you know, 6 a.m. I just wouldn't care. I would just work, 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 work. It, it didn't matter where I spent my time as long as I was doing something productive. Now I feel like I work a lot more efficiently and every hour of my day is allocated to doing something. So I really look at where is my time best spent? How am, how am I able to get the most done during that time? And I've done my best to try to find as much balance as I can between having a life a little bit and working, even though I will say like work is my life in uh, quite a big sense and I enjoy it, but I've definitely become a lot more efficient and balanced in the process. I certainly think there is that risk of building your entire career on YouTube and potentially being at the whims of an algorithm. But I think to counteract that, we have such a supportive community. I've tried to diversify a little bit to other platforms and if something were to happen, I would always have something else to fall back on. And that relieves some of the stress or some of the need to, you know, keep the hamster wheel going and really do this from a place of authenticity in the sense that like I really enjoy making content, not so much because it's like, oh, I need to sustain this lifestyle that just disappears if something were to happen to it. I don't know what's uh so <laughs> I don't know. I'm just embarrassed. Go. I don't know. There you go. Good enough.